for the television audience. It's, okay, sound source, barracks in streamer, takes the audio, analog audio, converts it to an IP through the network. Just for giggles, we're going to run it through some fiber. Uh, another reason to run it through some fiber. Uh, into the X streamer, which converts it back to analog audio and into the transmitter or house system. Now the neat thing about these boxes is you have them pre-configured with an IP address, but you forget what it is when you plug it in. One, nine, two, dot, <coughs> one, six, eight, dot, one, dot, two, three, two. So, which is handy because the only other way to get into it is through the, yeah, actually I think it comes as a, um, a 10 dot something. Yeah, um, but if you're sitting there playing with them, reconfiguring them, and you go, oops, what was it, and you can't get into it, pull the plug, put it back in, and it tells you who it is, which is a nice feature. Uh, if I'm trying to find, pardon me? Oh, okay. Um, now the other thing, and right now for some reason I haven't quite figured out, uh, the X Streamer box has a USB on it, and what you can do is put music or program material or emergency whatever, one, and this will reboot because I plugged it in, one, um, six, eight, dot, and it will play one, from this if it can't two, find three, two, one of the other internet sources that's attached to it. So right now it's kind of talking, so it's not going to do much of anything. Uh, it's just for giggles. Get some music up. Does it just play randomly from whatever it finds on there? You actually create a, uh, a playlist if you want. And it will play from that playlist or you can set the thing up to randomly, supposedly play. As a matter of fact, what kind of playlist? Like, it's an yeah. Here, I'll show you the right there. Play, you know. So it's a standard. So that's just the file name. Yeah. So you're you're connected to the X X code. Right. Yeah. It's the. It has its own little web server. That's yeah. Each one has their own little web server. So and so this is the in stream box, and this is how you would link to that if you had multiple boxes. Uh, you put the different ones on and what happens is if it loses the first one, it goes to the second one. If it loses the second one, it goes to the third one. If it loses all three, you're toast. And then what happens is, okay, if, if, if it's lost the first two, it's found the sec second or the first one back, and it's playing from a playlist, it will wait till that particular song is done before it goes back to the higher order thing. Now. I was having some problems with this, but we'll see if this works. So, we'll drop the network connection. And I've got it set for a 30 second timeout. Um, you can set it for zero, you can set it for an hour if you want. So that uh, playlist is really for your USB dock. It's for the U. Not, not for your. Computer. Well, yeah. It's, that's off the. And it's stored on the USB. So you could have one for every day of the week, and if you go out there once a week, change it. That's coming from the thumb drive, right. Yeah, this will play through to the end of that particular cut. Just ignore her. This is just happened to be a couple of MP3 cuts I had laying around. Well, it's one of the early ideas was actually for doing airport audio, where you'd have a single source and you would distribute it to each one of your different um, hallways, if you will. Um, so then it'll switch back, and if it loses the stream after the 30 seconds for whatever reason. It'll go back to the MP3, and it keeps a, a counter in there so that it knows, well, who I've played last, so it doesn't necessarily start playing the same thing over and over again. So you can put your IDs on there, create a playlist 
for an hour or two hours and just pick it up and just so you you know, every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, play your ID and away you go. Um, the other thing with the in-stream, um, these are also, let me go back over to this one, let's see. Uh, let's just, um, yeah. Yeah, we know, we know, we know. Refresh. Okay. You can set up, going into your configuration, Okay, that's where you would set your IP address. You can set how you're getting your audio in, whether you're mono, stereo, line, optical. Um, that's your different encoding rates that you can set for. So you can either have decent quality or crap quality, depending upon what you're using it for. Um, it's got a fairly wide amplifier range, so if you don't have enough gain coming into it, you can crank it up. Uh, these are a bunch of other settings for MP3 type stuff that... That software can both units? Pardon me? That software can both units? Well, yeah, it's a web browser, so... Yeah, this one here is looking at the encoder, and this one here is looking at the outcoder. Yeah, so as long as you can get to it, you know, you can take a look at it. Um, you know, you can set up streaming mode, send on level, always send. Again, you can set your um, type of audio you're sending. There's, as a matter of fact, where's the, you know, there's the uh, instruction manuals if you want to read through them all. And, uh, and that's not the programming guide. Travel Place is getting better right now. And I'm not sure why that's doing that. It could be my hub. It's, I think it's overheating actually. Um, so it, took over. it lost the stream. It wasn't happy about something. And so it said, okay, fine. I'll play the backup until the stream comes back. Um, you can set up either a simple contact closure lead kind of thing so that if you need to send somebody a signal, you click do the contact closure, it'll send it over the RS-232 link and light a lead at the other end. Or you can have an actual, like I said, terminal kind of thing so you can send low-speed messages back and forth. Uh, some more of the controls for getting into and out of it. Uh, it's basically a one-way. You can set up, yeah, um, here, let me show you. the. Uh, well, again, you, you can set that up depending upon how you're streaming. This is the... Um, where is it here? Okay, here's, here's where you can stream. You can set up eight locations to send stuff to. In this case, it's an RTP. But you can... You can use a shoutcast if you're actually using the box to encode to a shoutcast or an icecast um, um, streamer. So you can use this as your, instead of put dedicated computer, you can put one of these out there. Um, so, you know, you can actually do SIP if you want to send it to your uh, IP phones. You know, why, I don't know. Um, I, there's a lot of features on here. Uh, if you have a management console, you can set up your simple management traps so it'll talk back and let it know that there's a problem. Um, multiple levels of security so you can password this thing left right and sideways to the point where you forget what you actually set for um, but this these boxes are primarily designed for a in-house live network well that's what they originally designed for that's not what they're being used for um, the as a matter of fact um, station up in East Norton, WFLY, was using this, or YL, uh, had this thing set up that it came in in East Norton, went up to Boston, turned around, went back to East Norton, and then hopped from East Norton from the uh, caddy shack over to the transmitter building that was on the golf course. Uh, they've since got rid of a lot of the garbage, but it's still now, they've, they're still streaming from um, I forget which direction, but they're, they're using this as a monitoring uh, source. 
uh, so that they can listen to the program and control it to a certain extent out there. The um, they've got there's a couple different versions. One of the extremers has a power amp built on it, it so that you can actually use it as a, a PA system if you wanted to. Um, like I said, there's, there's a couple different versions of software. One of the applications is actually a remote um, a um, remote doorbell gate release system that you can use. Um, they have, and as soon as I can find a box, um, you could if you set it up that way. Where's my? Oh, there it is. Yeah. No, I think I think there's actually that uh, router has a fan problem. So. What application are you using? What we're going to be using it for in Trenton uh, once I get the turned around so it's actually pointing the other direction, if you will. Uh, will be for ministries. Well. Right now, it's we need to be able. Someplace you have to have a static IP address for the thing, and the way it's currently set up is the static IP address is it pulls it from the receiver or from the transmitter. Okay, what I have to do is turn it around so the static IP address is going to be on the receiver, so that the transmitter, different transmitters, can get to it at the appropriate time. Oh, so you're going to do it backwards. You're going to have one receiver and many transmitters. Transmitters, yeah, yeah. But again, the, they give you all the, you know, the code and the software that you can play with. And if you're so inclined and you're totally insane and you want to build your own, you can actually buy one of their little developer's cards. And actually, this here is the brains, and this is just sort of the I.O. kind of thing. But you know, this gives you complete flexibility to do almost anything you want with it. Um, it's actually got two network connections on it. It's got the USB, you know, the serial uh, audio on the thing. So that's a little project for the next six months is to bury that side into a couple of boxes and turn it into it so we have bi-directional communications and stuff on it. So that's not the cheap way to go, though. What do you find is the latest? Uh, it's about. Yeah, um, it's really not too bad. Uh, it's it's more the initial hookup, you know, the handshaking, and then after that, it's it's only a couple of um, seconds at worst case. Uh, it it, it kind of depends on what you have in line, really. You know, if you've got a lot of crap between here and there, uh, you're gonna, you know, no matter what you do, it's going to be that way. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you can set, one of the things that you can set up in here is the amount of buffering. Does it try and automatically adjust the buffer or is it just you set it and that's what it is? Well, you can have it to start immediately, which means as soon as it gets it, uh, I've got it set for 100 milliseconds. Well, uh, does it doesn't try and dynamically adjust the buffer based on what's coming in? Not in its generic it up, form. You can yeah. set it up for whatever. You yeah. Mean. I mean, they can set eight, eight seconds or max, whatever max is. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet with the thing. Um, Let's say the store had a router. Which menu are you on? Hmm? Which menu are you on? Yeah. Oh, I'm on, right now I'm on the uh, extremer, the output. It's long yeah. 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 Your RS-232 jack on the extremer. Mm -hmm. Is that the yeah, okay. purpose of that primarily for the back channel? Yeah, like if you, yeah, you could, if you could pass serial contact closures over. Yeah, yeah, it's bi-directional. Yeah, it, it's a low, it's a low bit rate. But yeah, um, let's see if I can find where that is. Uh, X, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in theory, you can crank it up, but. Yeah. You know, and I think the software lets you 
geometry? Uh, can right. you program uh, in time specific events or like you would in a, in a, in a regular station automation? Or? Not, well, not in this now. I mean, you, if you can pass it through it, yeah, but this, there's no timing. In so the generic here, you've got, to, you've got to make your own clock. Clock, so yeah. You've got to have anything like the clock. Right. One of the things that <coughs> they were talking about for doing um, sort of like what we're doing, going to do up in Trenton with the thing, is that the way they're switching between three sends and one receiver was that the first send would go, then. When that one silenced, the second one would automatically pick up. So as long as nobody was trying to stop on somebody else and the first person knew to turn it off, you were okay. But if the first guy doesn't shut him, his sender off, then he's got the system locked up kind of thing. Um, the, uh, you know, the, no, it's just, it's, it's, it's eliminating an ISDN line or a, a uh, dry pair. Assuming that you can get a decent connection. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can kind of get around it, depending upon what you want to do. You need a static IP address so somebody can find somebody. Okay. Well, there there are services available that will give you. Yeah, I'm saying you have to go through your ISP. Well. Well, no, you don't necessarily have to go through them. There are other. Um, services available that will give you a web URL and through a piece of software that's sitting on some machine, your laptop or a machine that's hooked up. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you would take this box, send it down to their to their system. Mm -hmm. They would provide a static IP and then send it somewhere else wherever you want. Yeah. I mean, you would have it available, but you'd have to pay them. Well, yeah, if that's one way to do it, yeah. <coughs> Actually, there are services that, and they and they're, don't cost all that much. Static that, DNS. Yeah, static DNS. So what happens is they have a little piece of software running on your thing, which feeds their system on a daily basis or hourly basis or whatever, an IP address, and it says, okay, and you go, when you type in URL, you go out to them, they resolve it back to you kind of thing. Um, you know, most stations, I would think, would have a static address. Um, you know, most of the major stations, anyway, would have static addresses available to them. You know, the smaller stations may not, um, but the, uh, the major ones would probably have but a static address. you're going to make this work backwards from a church, mm. all you have to do is get an IP address at the church Well, and come back that way. Yeah, in our case, I've got 16 static IP addresses at the station, and the churches have DSL connections without static IP. So that's so, how you're going to get back. Yeah, so I'm going to be the, the static address, and they're going to find me. Once this is up, you leave it up all the time, right? You can, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll have, and that's the one thing I'll have the capability of doing, again, by rewriting the software so it does what I want it to, mm -hmm. I can leave that connection up all the time and then select who I want to be allowed to talk to me at any given time. Right. So that's the. So if you have Church A coming up at 10 o'clock and Church B coming up at 11 o'clock, you can let it go from one to another. Right. It comes up with the same pot, so to speak. Right, okay. yeah. And it just comes up, and I, right. you know, the program in the box will say, at this time, disconnect, right. kind of thing. So, but I mean, that's. Do you think you're going to be able to get it with, working with your automation? Automation you better turn that off and, and make those decisions? I don't know. I haven't even gotten that far worrying about the automation since it's manned okay. during this. Time period. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've just I've just kind of got started playing with some of the, the coding and stuff on the thing. And uh, yeah, the nice thing about it is if you wipe if you wipe out the coding, as long as you can get into the box, you can download the code back again and you know start over. <laughs> so. Yeah. You made a comment a bit ago about if the first guy doesn't shut off, the second guy can't come on. You're describing a system like that on the same, same, same Sunday morning. But how, how do you... Well, that's, that's in the generic software, okay? Because I'm rewriting the software, okay. I'm going to be controlling that you're, aspect you're of it. You're set up really a time-controlled time system, yeah. like I mentioned earlier. So. Yeah. So that the, the three or four churches at the stations carry whatever the number is on Sunday morning this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to be there when 
and no matter what somebody does at the church, if they fire up the equipment early, you know, the other guy is not going to get get in because you're now telling the box which the one is the live one at what time. Yeah, yeah. But again, the and, and I'm kind of flipping the whole scenario over from the original design. Yeah, many to one. So. Yeah. So. What kind of bandwidth does the stereo channel take up? I mean, if you've got a limited bandwidth connection. Which is Again, it, it depends on what you want to do for your, um, you know, your encoding. I mean, there's your choice of. We can't quite see that. Oh, okay. Uh, you can go anywhere from MPEG 148 kilohertz uh, down to a, a PCM 8 kilohertz mono. Um, well, there's also a PCM 24K 16-bit. Bit, yeah. Which oh. would be your high bandwidth option. Yeah. So there's but even at the AKC mono, you still get plenty for a ball game. It's not going to be yeah. bad. But not for a church. It's never going to be no. a home. As a matter of fact, let me see. You can upgrade it for the other stuff. Just for giggles, let me see if I can do this without. Let me see if I can change this. You got 56 kilobits on the dial. What you got? Let's see if this will figure this out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shut up. Yeah, well, it's, it's. Does it actually, does it switch on the audio or does it switch on the IP? Both, actually. As if, it, if, it, if you set it so that the audio is missing and or the IP connection drops. So, did that... So if we're losing the IP on this little simple setup, we got a problem. Well, that, that hub or uh, switch has got a temperature problem. Uh, you should have been here earlier when the fan sounded like a Boeing 747 taking off. <laughs> uh, so... You need ice, ice cubes. Yeah. Switch. So... What's the uh, ballpark price of these items? The encoder is around 400. The uh, Xtreamer is around two, without the power ramp option. I think with the power ramp, it goes up to like three or something. Um, who is it? S SCMS is the distributor that handles it. Uh, these are unbalanced in and out. These are unbalanced in and out. Um, one thing I'm not sure, and that's something I'm got to play with. Where do I put the yeah, there are C. Well, yeah, there are CA, or you can. For the encoder, you've got optical, um, digital. This version of the thing only has the, the output, uh, the analog, unbalanced. Oh, there we go. Start it. Start, well, yeah, you can do stereo and mono. The um, this one here, the eval kit, I think, is actually. If I remember right, it's actually got a balanced in and out. Uh, I take that back. No, it's not. Level stuff. Yeah, yeah. They. That's one thing. They they seem to every couple of weeks come out with something new. So, um, actually, how I found out about them originally was that they have a. Um, a programmable controller unit um, that's got a bunch of IOs, some analog input and output, uh, serial uh, that I was going to actually try to get my ex boss convinced to use that to do uh, some remote switching with. Um, and then all of a sudden I was, oh, hey, they got some audio products. Let me go get a couple of them and play with them. So uh, it's a Swedish company. Um, they got an office over here. Um, now, so far they've been pretty good to deal with. Swiss. Swiss. Swiss, Swedish. Swiss, Swiss yeah. Swiss. Yeah. 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 So I should mention that um, 1180 and King of Prussia, WFYL, mm -hmm. is, is using these for their STL, and it actually loops through Framingham, Massachusetts. Well, they've actually changed that. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, I, yeah they actually changed that. Um, it's now, they're only doing it one way now. Oh, one way? Yeah. The, uh, but this is what they use. But this is what they were using, yeah. They're still yeah. using it uh, between the 
the building and the, and the transmitter? No, actually, that they, they switched that out to a, uh, a 950 STL. 950. And the reason for that was is because they were trying to do a wireless and there was too much interference. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, because I talked to, uh, what's so his name up there? 24-7 with this. Yeah. So. And then why the loop? It's a private network. You don't have to worry well, about they, that was kind of the control hub. They, they do have a local studio in the old house. It's, it's out on a golf course off of Cooper Road. <laughs> they, um, they really run everything out of the sister station up in Framingham. Mm -hmm. In fact, the EAS receivers were feeding one of these. I mean, they have the mm -hmm. EAS box up in Massachusetts. Yeah, that has since, so my understanding of talking to that has since changed because they're actually doing a live show. Okay locally now, so they've moved, they've kind of cleaned up their act, you know, whether or not the FCC came knocking on the door and go, hey guys, you know, whatever, but, uh, yeah. We, uh, we actually have a couple of these out and around the country, uh, operating as STLs, and I think we had one pair that was up for about two years, because we uh, mm. set it up in Oregon. But we've got one here locally that's been giving us a lot of trouble. Uh, we have it going through a pair of, uh, Wi-Fi links, mm. uh, about a half a mile or so, and uh, those seem solid, but we seem to have like some kind of a firmware problem with uh, with the barracks boxes. They kept on just dropping and buffering. And kind of like what it was doing before. Yeah. Mm. So. No, I said this. I think it's more the that hub is their switch is temperamental. That's why I got pulled out from where it was. Um, but yeah, they, they come out with software revisions on a regular basis, and the uh, you know, like I said, if you don't like what you got, rewrite it. So yeah, another place that uh, these are being used, I, I worked with a little independent AM station in upstate New York. Uh, they got a translator, and it's they got free rent from the local county public safety office because they. And you know, they got in good with, with the local sheriff to become the emergency notification you know, for that county. So he gave them free space on public safety tower, but it didn't have a clear shot from the studio, which was maybe two miles away. So he really couldn't run a 950 link. And he toyed around with the idea of double hopping it. And I said, well, why don't you look into these barracks boxes? So he ordered DSL from Verizon at the translator site. That's the same ISP he uses at the studio. And I think he's had it up now for about a month. And uh, as far as I know, it's working fine. In fact, the little serial port, I think he's using that to uh, to do some monitoring mm. uh, you know, of the translator. Yeah, and you could set up a VPN, which would eliminate some of the uh, you know, other stuff and also make it secure. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was going to try to set up the wireless, but I just didn't have time to, to get there. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're a fun little box. They have certain applications that they could be use, useful for. Not the answer to everything, but, uh, yeah, interesting toys. It would be really good for permanent remotes because you've yeah. you got a, a club or a, a, a yeah. well, even, church. Well, as long as you, again, as long as you've got a static IP address at right. the it's studio, right. essentially you should be able to take this anywhere and plug it in and it'll find it and go from there. So. Do you have any kind of a recommendation on, on whether you should regularly reboot it, even if it's uh, doing okay? It's up for a week or up for a month? Um, I've got no feel at this point for that. Um, you know, it's, like I said, some, you know, like you said, you had one that's been up for you know, a couple of years. It's, it's kind of like, it's when, power yeah, <laughs> the uh, my biggest complaint is I don't like the uh, the connector that they use on the uh, power plug. It's you really need to make sure that's in there solid and it's not going to fall out. Uh, you know, it's just a standard wall wall wart type, and uh, you know it's you know, it's not bad, but it, you know it's. <laughs> Yeah, they put some. Yeah. Hey, what do you want? You know. So. Yeah, I mean, you could crank it. Yeah, you you could pull the plug out and 
and soldered. And of course, your warranty would probably be void immediately, <laughs> but uh, well, yeah. But that's the trade-off. So. This is a European company, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they, they got, you know, their warranties are different mm -hmm. than our warranty. Right? No. No, it's, it's, you know, like I said, this is actually well, that's, this is, that's not too bad right now either. Yeah. Actually, these are warmer than that. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, like I said, the, right now that's quiet. When I first powered it on, I know Larry. You, I think you were here. Did you, no, okay, maybe not. The uh, the fan in there is not a happy puppy. So, but uh, anyway, that's that's kind of a quick and dirty overview of the things. The, uh, like you said, you're getting your stuff from SCM. Yeah, yeah. I ordered it through Art White since I know him. So. Yeah. yeah, CMS, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with Art for, as a matter of fact, he's the one who drug me kicking back into the automation business. So, you know, 14, 15 years ago. So, uh... But yeah, they're the, they're the distributor for it here. There's, some, there's a, somebody else, I think, is also a distributor for it, but I don't know who off the top of my head. Um... Like I said, the, the, the neat thing, let me see if I can bring, just for, just to show you, um, switch this off anyway. Cable, 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 cable. At least it's not 98. The other thing too is most of the time, even though you have a DSL with a dynamic address, it's usually static, and it usually stays that way. You know, unless the, you reboot the uh, the router so or the, the modem. The expense you'd have to have if you're paying for it would be the DSL on. Yeah, nineteen ninety five a month or whatever it is this week. Yeah. And it just runs on that thing all the time. Yeah. It's cheaper than a dedicated truck. It sure as hell is. Yeah. Uh, Let me see if I can. If you, uh, get you up have there. a bad connection mm -hmm. and uh, you, know, you have the buffer at three seconds or something and you lose a little bit over time, can the box, when the, when the connection covers, can it make up some of that buffer time? Or is it like a one way downhill? Yeah, it's as far as I know. Yeah, this is actually what I was originally. And you can see here's the, you know, let me bring that down a little bit. So, this is what I was actually originally looking at was the Baronet family um, product. Oh, good. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing. This is it. This was actually what I started looking at for uh, the thing. So it's got 12 analog and digital inputs. So you can put temperature sensors. So basically, you can make a remote control out of it. And the neat thing is you can take them. If you've got multiple ones on a network, they can all talk to each other. So what I was looking at, since I was kind of running my own phone system when I was at Rowan um, over dry pair, uh, what I was going to do is set this thing up so that when I needed to connect different places, all I had to do is say, okay, I want to connect from the studio to the gym, and the switch that was over in the student center would go, okay, and move my pair that went from the studio to the student center and connect that to the gym instead of the football field or to one of the other halls kind of thing. Um, also, the other thing I was looking at, because we have no way of getting the contact closures off the satellite receiver, which is over at the student center, backhaul them across using, again, having this already in place, bringing that back over so I could get the contact closures on the thing. And uh, again, this is you know, fully programmable and you, know, you can make it do whatever you want. Uh, throw one out at your transmitter, you've got temperature sensors and, and stuff like that that you can actually get with the things. Um, I got the. How much bandwidth do you have for the, uh, the data? 
it depends on what you're doing with it. Again, it's all programmable, so if you want to take a sample once a second, you tell it take a sample once a second and pass it back. You know, it's, it's not really bringing... Well, no, it's, 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 it's bi... Well, it can be bi-directional. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now this, this happens to be their relay board, so you've got 12 digital inputs and 12 outputs on the thing. Plus, it's got extensions so that you can daisy chain them and do all sorts of neat things. Um, but yeah, you go back to the original. Um, you know, you can put temperature sensors. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that. That's their website. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just or build your own because all it is, you know, it, it's yeah. So I mean, you can you can go nuts with this stuff. A lot of toys for techies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's the actual brains of the thing right there. Yeah. You can, you can't see that too good, but anyway. Anyway, that's just to give you an idea of some of the stuff you can play with. Um, now, what, right now you're actually listening to the MPEG-2 at 16 kilohertz. So. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sound too bad. I wonder if you're listening to this. It's actually cheaper for us to buy. Where is it going? Just in this stuff? Yeah, right now it's just coming out of the CD player into the... No, we ship them in a big pallet here. A lot, of, a lot of shit to get from here to there, but... Yeah, but you, you yeah. have to get through that little thing. The switch? Oh, no, I don't have to use the fiber. I just threw that in there. Yeah. Because I was going to, like I said, I was going to use the, um, put the network up, the wireless network up, but I just threw this in here just to play, because this is a nice little fiber, Ethernet fiber converter box. Relatively cheap. They're like $80 a piece. So... It's really yeah. This is actually how I'm doing some. I was doing some funny things at Rowan with a set of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's actually, again, down at Rowan, um, the things end up over at the basement of one of the dorms. And from there, it ran underground to the water tower, which had the uh, relay hop on the thing. And on a regular basis, it would get cooked. Mm. Uh, and it's only, we're only talking from that wall to this wall, more or less the distance, but somehow it would get zapped by lightning and blow out the uh, transcoders. So we extended the fiber from the dorm over into the water tower. Well, now that I had six pair of fiber over there, I was only using essentially one uh, fiber out of the thing for the audio, and I had a network hub over here but I had no network in the water tower, pair of them over one of my spare pairs of fiber, and I now had network capabilities in the uh, water tower, which allowed me to then activate the RDS system that uh, I got from Mark, and uh, so I can control that from the studio instead of having to go over the water tower every time I wanted to do an update. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, for you know, 80 bucks a piece, you know, and again, these things been pretty stable. These, these have, yeah. I mean, I haven't had any. You know, I haven't beat on them that much uh, long term, but I haven't had any major problems with them. Um, the uh, back in September, I guess it was. I put the September, August. I'm trying to think when. Someplace back in there over the summer, I guess. Put the latest version of the software on the thing and did some stuff. But um, yeah, they seem to work. Yeah, I mean, there's not really that much in them. <laughs>